All right, Johnny B, let's do it, man. Let's do it. All right. Um, yeah, I guess this is the inaugural, the inaugural uh, pod, man. You're uh, officially the first dude on the Hope Boys podcast. I'm pumped about it, dude. Um, yeah, I, I, you know what? I'm going to intro you as best as I can. Um, this is my boy, Johnny B, Johnny Burke, Johnny B. Good, Mr. Hope Boy Johnny, Mr. Johnny Hope. Yeah. How's it going, my man? Go. Good to see you, dude. Thanks for being That's the good, first guy on the pod, man. I'm pumped about all this, dude. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, get my story out there. For sure, dude. And that's um, that's what we want to do is just kind of, you know, um, let everyone know the realities of, um, you know, addiction and recovery and all that stuff. And every story is different. And and um, when I jumped in the rooms myself, I heard a story that resonated with me. And so that's why I stuck around. And so that's why I want to do this is share the, um, you know, experience, strength and hope. You know, that's that's what we do. Um, and uh, yeah, I just I, I do want to thank you for being the first guy on the pod um hopefully it turns out as good as i want it to be but um if not we're gonna do it again i appreciate that my guy um we okay. got a funny you already story. know you already... yeah we got a funny story you and me um alone but uh, we'll probably get to that a little bit later i just wanted to um i guess start off uh, tell me uh, you know a little bit about um your childhood your early years you know what that looked like and uh, where you were born all right i'm uh my name is johnny b i'm coming at you from ottawa uh, the capital city of Canada. That's where I was born, uh, 1984, two and a half months early. Um, my mother uh, struggled with drug addiction, uh, so I was born addicted to cocaine. And I spent a month um, in the hospital uh, just because I was um, two and a half months early. And I bounced around a lot when I was a kid, um, the oldest of four. Um, and my dad wasn't really around. He was uh, he was into different things and biker stuff. And he uh, unfortunately ended up dying in 2004 in prison. He goes murdered. And uh, so my childhood was really like really hard. Um, you know, I grew up in the in the lower town Vanier ghetto of Ottawa, and it was hard. It was uh, you know we we didn't have a lot, um, and then like. I was, as being the oldest, I was, I was taking care of my, of my siblings a lot. And then eventually everything came to a standpoint. Um, you know, things kept getting worse. Um, you know, my, my, my sisters, my, I have two sisters, one brother, my two sisters are from a different dad. And uh, he was very abusive, um, all kinds of abuse. And so <laughs> when this, I was 10 years stepdad? old, this is your stepdad or your, your yeah, stepdad? yeah, 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 yeah. My, my yeah. stepdad. Yeah. He was, he was, he was, he was a very nice guy. And uh, my mom was super addicted and, and just super like, you know, not just being not present, parent. not present. Yeah, just not, just not present, not uh, yeah. And so, <laughs> long story short, we uh, when I was ten years old, I got adopted. Me, and my brother got adopted by my grandparents. Um, my sisters got adopted outside of the family, um, which caused me a lot of random home, like, like the random family. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I got like really resentful because I have six aunts. My mom has seven sisters or six sisters. And, and so that was really, none of them, none of them step up to the plate. And so oh. all my life I've had resentments against them for that. Um, so anyways, I went, I went into my grandparents. Um, I went from being able to do whatever I wanted as a 10 year old to my grandparents, Irish Catholic, tuck in your shirt, pull up your pants, take your hat off, you yeah, know, yeah. do this, do that. Wow, we're from, having from no rules to like, like <laughs> military style rules. So, like, if anyone's from Ottawa, I went from Lower Town to Upper Hunt Club, and so that's like one extreme to the other, right? Like, big ass house from a like a little shitty project house to a big ass house where you have everything you want and you're just not used to it, right? Like, I'm still going. I'm still at school going to the Breakfast Club. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? My grandma a free lunch. Copping a free lunch. Yeah, my grandma. My grandma's giving me shit because she's just like, they're going to think I'm not feeding you. And I'm like, well, that's what I know. You yep. know what I mean? And like, that's what's comfortable. And, that's what you know. Yeah. And so losing my sisters really affected me. I was very angry and just <clears throat> didn't get it. Um, my mom ended up getting sober after my sisters um, were taken away. I guess that was her bottom. She got sober for three years um, and she wanted me to move back with her. And how how old were you at this time? How old were you at this time? Um, uh, about 13. 13, okay. 
13 yeah so you're starting to like and, at that point in your life you're, you're trying to like figure out like who you are you're you're still like unsure about like yeah you're not a man yeah, yet but you're not sure. not a boy so you're starting to pick up responsibilities feeling a little more confident trying to figure out who you are as a yeah. person right yeah exactly and and so um i didn't want to go i was mad at my mother i was just like, i don't want to do this like i just I'm, i already got some roots here you know i want to stay here she was up in up in sudbury um and so my brother ended up going. Um, and then my brother got very sick. And um, he got uh, a, a disease called Crohn's and colitis. Yeah. And my mom has Crohn's. He was 14, my mom has Crohn's. When he was 14, back then, they didn't really know much about it. When he was 14, he almost died. He was like 59 pounds. And sure. so that really affected, affected me, affected my family. And my, I remember my mom stayed at the Ronald McDonald House in Ottawa for like three months, watching him like suffer. And um, eventually my mom relapsed and disappeared again. Yeah. And uh, I didn't see her for nine years. Did you go back with grandma? Um, I did. Yeah, I ended up moving in with my uncle. Oh, um, okay. My my grandpa's brother, which was uh, which was tough. Like, <clears throat> I started using uh, when I was 15. That was my next question. I was uh, going to jump into that. I was like, you know, at, at what point, like, when did you, you first start using it? And, and, like, you know, how did that make you feel? Like, what, what were you looking for out of that user? What were you looking uh, for something? Or did you just try it and it, it filled a gap that you you needed or didn't know you had yet yeah like in high school when i started high school like i was really like um i was very very athletic but i was very like scrawny and shy and like whatever and so I, I, I started drinking this cooler big two liter cooler <coughs> one weekend my first time drinking and uh oh cooler as in like an alcoholic beverage like a cooler like a mic yeah like an open it's called like an Okanagan Valley cooler and it was in a two liter bottle yep. and I drank the whole thing and I got just plastered. And I remember waking up and it's like, I had the flu and I was in some trailer and I like, I was like, so your oh, first drinking was your first blackout. <laughs> yeah. I blacked out. First how's, time how's that for a sign? Hey, eh? looking back now, you're like, wow, I was an alcoholic yeah. day one. You know, like, like both my parents have this disease. So there's a high chance that I, I was going to pick it up, but, um, so it started off like, um, for me, I just, I, this, I think this is important <laughs> to mention is I became very, very good at basketball. And so I, uh, that was like an outlet for me. And so I wouldn't allow drinking to get in the way of that. So like, I would plan my drinking around like my tournaments and my like practices and like all that stuff, because I just loved it so much. And I ended up getting so good that I, I had, I had, um, Arizona State, and I had uh, Niagara looking to give me a scholarship. Okay. Um, but because of my size and my attitude, um, like I was very cocky, not very good, like support. But anyways, I ended up getting a scholarship. I ended up <coughs> going to <coughs> um, college in Peterborough, okay. played there for a year. Was that Trent? Um, no, I played at the college, Sir Stanford Fleming. Oh, Fleming. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I went there for a year, and, like, my drinking at that point, my using, like, marijuana was a big one. Yeah. Like, I was smoking weed all the time, like, chronic. Of course, of course buddy. <laughs> you of course. Know, you know, um, and yeah. then I was with the same girl for um, for five years. Okay. Um, and then eventually, uh, she uh, she broke up with me because of my nonsense, right? And uh, that hurt. No. And so, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to start over. I'm going to move. For sure. That's what I did. Geographic, I location, geographic location means sobriety and recovery. Wrong. My uncle, my uncle owned a construction company out west. Yeah. And uh they flew me out there. Nice. Flew me out to Calgary. And yeah. uh, I was 21 years old. You know, my basketball dreams were over. My <laughs> my drinking was getting worse. Um, I was depressed. And they flew me out there anyways. And uh I just ruined it. I just made a mess of everything. You know, um, that's when everything really, really started for me. That's when I think I crossed that line. Yeah, uh, was when I went out west because I, I, I would, I was gambling. I was started doing coke. I, I was, you know, but I was able to work still because I was young. At this point, Johnny, have you had any legal consequences regarding your drinking and drugging at this point yet? Before you went out to Calgary or Alberta? No, no legal consequences. Not yet, not yet. I still had. No, yeah, no, yeah. We'll get to that. Not yet, but wait. <laughs> so yeah, so I ended up getting kicked out of my uncle's house, fired me, 
Yeah. My aunt was an alcoholic too. Like she's never made any sense. And me and my cousin just party, party, party. And anyways, I ended up on the streets of Edmonton. Um, that's when it was like my first big bottom. Um, I stole <clears throat> a bunch of cash from my uncle and I ended up on the street. What's Edmonton. a bunch? We're going to be honest on this podcast. I promise you, listener, uh, we will be honest on this podcast 100%. At least I will. I can't say for the I guess. stole, I stole, you know, uh, 50 for honesty, so we're going to hear right now. If he wants to share. <coughs> I stole fifteen hundred dollars in cash. Okay. From my uncle uh, that I found in his drawer in his room, and what were, you, whole what were you doing in there, Johnny? What were you looking for in so, there, Johnny? I was actually looking for his weed because I knew he smoked oh. weed, and I and I found fifteen dollars in cash instead, and like I bounced. And I don't even know if they've ever forgiven me for that. Um, but I, anyways, I took the money. I ended up on the streets in Edmonton. Um, and how old did you? You know, I ended up in a. 24 24 okay yeah okay. 24 23 24 how long have you been at west? West at this point so i've been out west about two three years at this point, point. Okay. okay yeah so it, it went good for and a long then, time it went good for a long time it went good for about a year like i wouldn't say good but i was managing working and doing all the other stuff yeah, yeah. you know what i mean um okay. But then I, I, there was a breaking point where I just couldn't do it anymore. Like I, my using, especially when I got into the, the crack cocaine, I remember, I still remember I was 23 years old. It was New Year's Eve and I, and I tried I think, that. Yeah, drug this, I was going to ask you about this story. I think this is, you know, what you've said already up until this point, um, some of your childhood, uh, you know, that's something ab about you that I didn't know at all yet. Right. Like you and I, like, you know, we've become close in the last, well, let's say since Christmas, to be honest, but, um, yeah, no, like that's a part of your story I didn't know. This is one story I was going to ask you about because it was one story that kind of hit home yeah. with me. Um, you know, it, it resonated with some of my antics. But uh, yeah, I was going to ask you to share this story if you if you would, man. It's it's a goodie. It's a good. Yeah. It, looking back, I'm sure while you were riding it out, it probably wasn't so good. Yeah. So before I tried crack cocaine, I was doing coke for about I don't know six months, and uh, I'm at a New Year's party, New Year's Eve party. And, in a in calgary and it's like a one of my but my cousin's buddies had this i don't know his huge house it's like massive mansion you gotta like go through a gate and we're there and i go to his room and he's just like hey why take the bus when you can take the plane and i'm like what brings me in his room and he's got these little rocks and so you're going I try to it man. the hard boom yeah the, the so i try it i try it in a bong and boom like that was it man that was i think that that choice ruined my life right there okay. yeah um because i was never able to put it down um and that night i spent 800 dollars my first time doing it and it gradually it didn't become an everyday thing but it was like it started off as like once a month i do do like a two-day bender of crack then it was like by the time I stole that money, you know, I was downtown Edmonton, you know, smoking crack with homeless people and being homeless and never been homeless before and staying in shelters. And, you know, I got into this huge fight down there and, uh, you know, ended up uh, assaulting police officer, um, ended up doing three months in jail in the um, Edmonton Remand Center. And if anyone knows Edmonton, I don't recommend going to jail there it's uh it was a scary thing like i was 128 pounds first time in jail thank god i had some people to help me and show me some things but you know it wasn't it was it's, jail is not a place for me you know as <coughs> no it's really a place that anyone wants to go you know it's just um it, you know so this was the first time that you saw heavy legal consequences from your drinking and drugging yeah big okay. time you know and like yeah. they wanted more time but because i didn't have a criminal record they yeah. gave me like kind of a slap on the wrist and just put me in the penalty box for a few months. And yeah, just yeah. Think about it, you know. Took your seat because did your, I did your minor. Would you? Yeah, do, yeah. 50, yeah. 90? Mm -hmm. Would you do 30, 60, 90? I did uh, just over 90 days. Just over 90 days. Okay. That's a yeah, long time. And, I'm sure uh, a week feels like a month in the joint. Never been there myself. But they wanted over two, they wanted over two years because of the assault on the officer and the threat, death threats on the officer and then the assault I had on the other person. So there was lots 
anyways, I was able to get some good legal aid, which is hard to believe, but I got to earn it. And anyways, I got released and I stayed homeless for another two months. And then I remember I was going to jump off a bridge and uh, all I heard was my grandma's voice in my head. And so I emailed her and uh, I emailed her. Yeah, I think I emailed her and she sent me a Greyhound bus ticket and told me, if you come home, you have to go to rehab. So, and my grandmother, like, I love her. She's still alive today, actually. And, uh, you know, she's, you know, basically like my mother, you know? And so, yeah, for sure. um, so anyways, I, I, I took the 78, 75 hour bus ride. <laughs> yeah, across, from, across the country. From Edmonton and if anyone doesn't nothing. know the geographical um, span of, of Canada, do yourself a favor and Google it on your phone or your iPad or your whatever yeah, you're watching this on right now, because it's a distance, same country. And you're driving for like a week straight. It's insane. I think the ticket was like 140 bucks. And I, like, sure looking back at it now, I'm sure you were not feeling very hot on that, that Greyhound bus. I had some, I, I didn't have any uh, like hard drugs, but I had some weed and I, I found a pack of smokes at the bus station, which was a miracle. Yeah. And uh, But all I had was like a backpack full of like crackers and snacks that the homeless yeah. shelter gave me to leave on the bus. And anyways, I ended up home um, and my mom was there with like my brother and like, they were, they were dealing oxys out of this little town called R Prior, like big time dealers. Um, Welcome home, which was like, <laughs> Yeah, no, I just was like, I, I couldn't handle it. And I ended up going to rehab. You go to, in, go to rehab and be sober when like you come home to this. That's a pretty difficult task, man. That's two left feet and ugly it shoes. Was, it, it was tough, but I went. I went. I ended up going to rehab. My first time of rehab, 2000. Inpatient? Inpatient? <clears throat> yeah, I did a place called Elliott Lake, uh, Camilla Center. And I just was coming off the streets, man. And I, I think people are holding hands. And like, I was just like, I didn't like it. But I knew that for me, it was just a place of refuge. And it planted the seed in my head. And I got introduced to AA. And I got introduced to, I knew about a little bit about recovery because my mom was in it. And she was trying. And I read up on it. But anyway, I stayed sober for five months. Um, I ended up moving up to St. Marie, which is a, a town in northern Ontario. That's a drive. That's and, a from uh, us here in Toronto. It's about eight hours to the Sioux or more. Uh, no, it's more. Like it depends. If you go through the states, it's yeah. shorter. Yeah. Um, but if you go through Ontario, for you, it would be uh, about fifteen hours. Maybe that's what it was. It was ten, ten, hour, Bay, it's ten hours from Ottawa. I drove to Kenora, and that was like twenty-two hours with a stop in the Sioux. So yeah, it was yeah about halfway. Yeah. But if you drive through Michigan to the Sioux. Because you go around, you don't go, have to go around. All Unfortunately, the way. Johnny, I'm going to share a little story here very quickly. The person I was going to Kenora with also had an assault on an officer charge. So we were not allowed to go through Michigan because, yeah. because of the record, right? So ironically, that's yeah, okay. as well. And I just want to say that was my man, Corey Lovey's rest in peace, man. That was some um, uh, yeah. mental health mental health issues that um, that sorted him out. And then he was taken way too soon and he was a good friend. And, uh, yeah, so a recipe for Corey Lovey's man. My man. Respect, uh, respect. Yeah, so now you're in uh, the Sioux. Yeah, I'm in the Sioux for three years. And, uh, you know, I'm my uh, this Italian guy I met in, in, in uh, rehab, owned two restaurants, and he gave me a job, gave me a place to stay, and uh, we became really good friends. But uh, then uh, we ended up starting to, you know, not stay sober. And then, you know, I just started doing blow. I started doing blow. I wasn't doing the crack, but I thought, uh, anyways, crashed and burned that back to, uh, back up. and then during that time, actually, uh, when I was in the Sioux, um, you know, uh, I haven't been speaking to my mom very much, um, you know, because of there, there was a report, there was a big investigation. Um, she had two doctors that lost their license because that's where she was getting her her supply, her drug supply from gotcha. uh, up in Sudbury. Help, help, help. And there was, a, there, there was like a ring yeah, happening. And we weren't sure if she was going to be, if they were connecting to her or not, but these doctors were all getting arrested. Gotcha. And then um, anyways, but long story short, she ended up deciding to get sober. She was sober again three weeks. And uh, you'll never guess what happened, man. I got a call uh, midnight, 2010, October, October 2nd. Still remember the call from my cousin Megan. Like this girl never calls me. Like 
I was like, this has to be serious. She calls me and she's like, John, you gotta come home. I'm like, well, why? She's like, your mom was in an accident. I'm like, an accident? What kind of accident? She's on life support at the uh, Ottawa Civic Hospital. And I was just like, I hadn't, ta- last time I talked to her was six months and it was like a yelling match. And um, anyways, my mom was on the bus, a city bus in Pembroke, a little shitty town outside of Ottawa. No disrespect for her, bro. It's just small. And, uh, but anyways, uh, the bus was, the door was broken. Anyways, she fell out of a moving bus and, you know, hit her head on the curb. Um, and, you know, instantly was brain dead. And so, you know, my grandpa booked me a $900 flight from Sault Ste. Marie to Ottawa. That's how much it was back then. And I got there and I had to pull, I had to make the decision, me and my grandpa to, to take my mom off life support, um, which was a tough decision, man. Like I, you know, and then I had these people talking to me, they put, had me in this boardroom and they're like, does your mom have any good organs? And I'm like, my mom was an addict, man. She's got nothing to give. Yeah. Maybe she does. You can check it out. I don't know, but like, why are you even asking me? Yeah, 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 for sure. And like, you know, and I, I, I would, face were you in at this point in time, and and you know, yeah, you're, like, you're also battling addiction and stuff too, right? So you're not in a headspace to be any, be any of these. Like, I go. I had a Mickey in my po- in my pocket, and I was sipping it in the bathroom at the hospital just to take the edge off. And like, we took we pulled the plug, and they said it would take a few hours. My mom, she took twenty seven hours to die after we pulled the plug. <laughs> so that was horrible like having to wait that long um and then when she died it was just like i just went numb and i just didn't know how to really respond all i knew how to do was just use and uh, just the way it happened you know we ended up filing a big time lawsuit um against the bus company and they didn't want to take any blame or any like any accountability for what they did um and i remember i had to do a victim impact statement at uh, one of the court hearings yeah, and the owner was there, and I tried to I tried to attack him, and my grandpa had to pull me off him, and I almost got arrested in court. <clears throat> um, I was just so angry that there was no accountability from the bus company. Yeah. Long story short, we ended up getting a settlement of six figure, over six figures, um, as a family. Like, yeah, but putting a uh, putting a price on mom's life isn't uh, but the, isn't easy. The, the thing is, is like the, the that's the only way you can make these people pay is through their pockets. But like, it's the money is not going to bring my mom back. No, and uh, it wasn't even. I don't think even we should have got way more than that. Um, to be honest, but we're, we don't live in the United States. million dollars. It doesn't change the fact, like you said, we don't live in the United States. Accountable yeah. for what they did. Yeah, and it, they had a huge, huge black mark on their insurance. Like, so their insurance is for now on is going to be really expensive. But they're still in business. It's called Tom Bus Lines. You know, watch out for them. They're not. The, they're shady. Um and uh yeah, so that, that, Tom's bus lines. This is an anti shout out to Tom's bus lines right now. Yeah. So that so that happened to me, man, and that really affected me. Um like I have a hard time like even going in hospitals and, and we'll get to the hospital stuff later, but like um that really affected me just because I never had so much unfinished business with my mother that okay. and she was three weeks clean and all the other shit that she like she's been shot at, she's been this, she's been like and then to go out like this far out of a moving bus. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just yeah. like, what the, what's going on? Yeah, no doubt. So, man, I, I ended up coming to Ottawa, moving back home to Ottawa. Um, and again, I'm looking for a rehab center. You know, I'm, I've been putting myself through so much trauma, so much shit, so much anguish. Now I got this death on me, my my hands that I've never experienced. You know what, death you know what Johnny B? Let's take this as a moment because now we're are we at a pivotal point in your story? Yeah. Okay, so sure. after mom dies, did, did things get better or worse with your addiction and drinking? They got worse. They got worse. 